so so uh, the last few years I've been working on this uh, uh, feature called contracts with, together with a bunch of other people. Uh, what what it is is let's say we have like a vector op operator brackets where we index into it and we return we return an element. Um, we can now put this precondition specifier here, which you know is going to tell us if we are out of bounds and give us an error. And um, that's going to solve all the safety and security problems that anybody has. And uh, <clears throat> so basically, you can turn it on or off. Um, and it's like an assertion macro, except it's not a macro. You can put it on the interface, so it's much better. Um, so that's what you know I've been busy with for the last few years. And it turns out if you if you want to put such a big feature into a language uh, like C++, there's going to be you know a lot of dark corners of the language you have to deal with. And uh, that you're going to discover. And I really knew, I thought I knew C++ quite well, but it turns out I really, really, really don't, like, at all. Um, there's so many things. So here's just three things I, I, th I have time to talk about. Uh, one is a trial evaluation. This is something that I found out was a thing. So uh, you can have a const int, um, which is not a const expert. Um, but you can still, if you initialize it with a compile time, uh, um, Compile time expression. You can still use it at compile time and for array bounds or something. And apparently that comes from C. Um, however, if the initializer is not a compile time, then you can't do it. But now you get into this weird thing where if you have a const expression function that you can either uh, run at compile time or not run at compile time, depending on what parameter you pass in, then suddenly it depends on the parameter whether that integer is a compile time expression. And so there's this really weird thing in the C++ standard that says, uh, well, we're doing this trial evaluation where we're going to figure out if it's a constant expression or not. And depending on that, weird stuff happens. And then you can ask yourself, OK, during this trial evaluation, if the compiler runs out of memory and crashes, is that conforming to the standard? Because trial evaluation is, is not actually an evaluation, so it's not actually supposed to happen. So it's, it's a massive rabbit hole. Um, next thing, uh, what's the first declaration of a function? So you want to put these pre and post condition thingies on the first declaration, and you might put it on non-first declarations, but you have to put it on the first declaration. So you need to figure out what is a first declaration. And you would think, well, the first declaration is the declaration that I wrote first, right? No. <laughs> so we have modules. So the only like reasonable definition for this is a first declaration is a declaration from which no other declaration is reachable. And reachable is like a term that has to do with modules, quite complicated. Uh, which then also means you can have multiple first declarations. Each translation unit has its own. Um, and if you have a declaration inside a template, that is not reachable until you instantiate the template. So if you have a function f that you declare in a template x, and then also in a template y, and then also on its own, and then you call that function, which one is the first declaration of f in this program? One, two, or three? Three. OK, now you instantiate x, you instantiate y, and then you call f. What is the first declaration now? One. And then you flip the order in which you instantiate these completely unrelated templates. What's the first declaration now? Two, exactly. Right. So the third thing is, what happens when a function returns? And I thought, OK, we know this, right? Return value, it returns the value, right? No. So there's a lot more going on here. So let's say we have a struct x. And we have a function f that returns an x. And then in main, we initialize an object of type x with the return value of f. So what happens here when we, we reach this return statement? So it turns out first, this, this x here is initialized. Then local variables are destroyed, like j. And then parameters are destroyed. But that's the order in which things happen here. So we kind of have to do these post condition checks at this point, because you might refer to parameters. So we need to do it before then. Which leads to this really, really weird thing where we can initialize an x with the value of f. And then we pass the, the, the address of this object we haven't initialized yet into the function. And then in the function, we say, well, the return value of that function, the address of that needs to be equal to this address that we haven't initialized yet. But it turns out at the point we, initialize, we evaluate this thing, we have initialized it. So this is actually guaranteed to always be true. Um, except if x is a trivially copyable type, because then you have to be able to pass it in a register. Uh, and otherwise, it's an ABI break, so then it's not going to be equal. So I have more stuff, but I have 10 seconds left, so not going to do that now. Uh, thank you very much.